Okay, today we are going to do a hydro dip. So I have my bucket, I have my cups, um, I have my spray paint over here. I also have gloves on and I have a little stick that I can use uh, at the end to move any paint out of the way before pulling the cup up. I have a paper towel. And um, so you'll notice with the bucket that I've done the water up to here. It's gotta be deeper than what your, uh, what your cup is so that you can get the cup all the way down, get the paint out of the way and then pull it up. Sometimes I have issues with the five gallon bucket. Uh, there'll be a, a gap of no paint or something like that, uh, which makes sense because if you think of the surface area of this bucket, it is actually a smaller surface area than the surface area of this cup. So if you're having issues with that, I often use one of these. Now, if you use it, it's a 70 gallon. Um, and if you use a Tupperware container like that, uh, you will use a lot more paint, but it does give you a little more flexibility in how you put the cup down and chasing any of the paint, that kind of thing. So um, try with the bucket first, but if you have issues, then you can go to that. Um, you'll notice that neither of my cups are painted white. Um, if you paint the cup white, oftentimes you'll still see some of the white through the cup. So I like to paint it a color um, that I'm using to dip, um, unless I want, of course, a, a fairly white base. So I have shook up my spray paint. I've also put the can right in front of that color. While you're spray painting, you'll wanna make sure to put it back there. That way it's a really quick look. You don't have to play around with where the cans of paint are. Um, also, for this spray, I will be using Krillon paint. I really much prefer using Rust-Oleum. I do find a lot of the Krillon paints um, don't cover as well, so you'll get less of a, an intense color with them. And I have had some, uh, a couple of colors that have like practically instantly dried um, in my bucket, which isn't so effective. Um, also with the bucket, make sure you're using cool water. You'll also notice that I am in the shade and I am doing this first thing in the morning because it's already getting really hot where I am. Um, if your water is not cool, throw some ice cubes in there, mix it up, let it cool down a little bit. Um, I will be spraying, you'll notice I spray in different spots um, and then I'm not gonna mix it or anything. And when I dip, I'm going to dip at an angle. Once you're in, you can move it so that you are um, fully upright, but you want to start at an angle so you don't create an air bubble that then pushes paint away from your cup. Um, once you get it in there, keep it in there till you get the paint out of the way. And you'll also notice that I have put a plastic bag around my cup. That just protects my uh, tumbler arm from getting paint on it because I actually have had paint flake off onto other cups before. And it always ends up being a white cup, which is just lovely. twist as you go, you can move it towards color. Once you're in, keep holding it down and just push any of the paint out of the way so you don't double dip. And there you go, you have your cup. 
Now, if you do find that you have any like lumpy spots, take a paper towel, wet it down a little bit, and you can kind of blot really, really gently. But honestly, a lot of times, the any little bumps are not gonna be noticeable once you get the epoxy on. Okay, I'm now gonna do the red cup, and I wanna show you the difference using Rust-Oleum paint can do. See instantly how much more pigment is in that from just a couple of sprays. Now with this cup, I didn't use a bag, but I did uh, put a little bit of Vaseline in the inside so that this will just wipe off. And if you have a cheap dollar store strainer, you can, um, you know, help get any of the greedlies out. Okay, mix this. <laughs> 